Chapter 5 Sloan. The light is just barely peeking in the window when I hear a knock on my door. Sloan, it's time to get up for school. Linda's voice is entirely too cheery for this early in the morning. I blink and rub my eyes. I'm trying to open them, but they keep slamming back shut. I've slept better in the last few days than I have in the last few years, which is good, but my body is now playing catch-up for all the lost sleep, and my eyes are refusing to cooperate. Sloan, did you hear me? Are you awake? Yeah, I'm awake. That's not entirely accurate, as I feel like I could sleep for hours, but I answer to keep Linda from barging into the room. I don't know if she actually would, but I don't want to take the chance. Good. Get dressed. I have French toast ready and you need to eat before we leave. Ugh, why does she have to be so nice? I love French toast, and I can't remember the last time I had it, but I'm not going to say that. Fine. I'll be down in a minute. I wait until I hear her footsteps before I take a deep breath throw the covers back, and pad to the closet. There aren't many options, but I throw on my baggiest black sweater and jeans. Admittedly, it's a little warm for a sweater, but it's not like I have many options. When I enter the kitchen a few minutes later, Linda looks up, but I'm surprised to see her at the table alone. Where is Joseph? I ask glancing around and tugging on my sweater. Oh, he's at work already. His work starts at seven during the week. Her gaze drops to my outfit and then to her coffee mug as she lifts it to her lips. I wait for the rude comments about my outfit, but they don't come. Instead, she sets the mug down and smiles at me. You know, I was thinking, I bet you could use an updated wardrobe. What do you think about going shopping for some clothes when I pick you up today? I hate shopping, and I know this offer is probably because she saw my lack of clothing last night, and she's trying to be nice about it. But I've learned not to turn down these gestures. You never know when they'll come up or when you'll be forced to move again quickly and be unable to grab clothes. However, I'm not going to show that emotion so instead I offer a nonchalant shrug. I guess that would be okay. Wonderful. We'll make it a girl's day. She lifts her mug and sips. I used to do this with my daughters all the time. It would be nice to include you in that tradition. Her words don't sound fake, but they feel fake. There's no way she thinks of me like a daughter, which is why my wall goes up again and I lash out at her. Except I'm not your daughter. Look, I appreciate the roof over my head and everything, but you just met me yesterday. There's no way you think of me like your actual daughters. Linda sets her mug down and stares at me for a minute. I expect her to yell, to tell me I need to show some respect or something, but she doesn't. She just stares. Then she nods. You're right. You're not my daughter, and it's too early to say you feel like one. But that doesn't mean we can't enjoy today. I miss having my daughters around. I miss shopping with them. And you can help fill a void in my life. Maybe I can do the same for you. Oh, she's good. She turned it around to make me feel like I'm doing her a favor. And there's no good way to argue against that. Sure, is all I can say, as I slide into the seat chagrined. I don't understand how she can be so nice. She's like overdosing on sugar, but I can't seem to hate her. Last night, she even offered to tuck me in and pray with me before I went to bed. I declined, because I'm 17 and not 6. But as ashamed as I am about it, a tiny part of me wanted to say yes. I can't remember the last time someone tucked me in, if they ever did. Now she's offering to buy me clothes. 
There has to be something terrible about this family, because no one is this nice. At least, not in my world. I place some French toast on my plate, but before I dig in, Linda clears her throat. I pause and look up at her. We pray before every meal here. Her tone is not condescending, merely matter-of-fact. But it reminds me of the drawback of this place. Prayer. I have no doubt that praying before every meal will get old rather quickly. But I put my fork down and wait for her to pray. When she's done, I dig into the breakfast and try to tamp my smile down. It's almost impossible because this is the best breakfast I've had in ages. Do you have everything you'll need for school? Linda asks as she begins clearing the used plates. I have the basics, I say with a shrug. Pen and paper and books. No bag? The look of shock on Linda's face is almost comical. The last place didn't feel like I needed one, so I just carried it all. You just finish up and I'll be right back. She hurries out of the room, and the sound of drawers opening and closing carries through the quiet house. Just as I lift the last bite of French toast to my lips, a cat jumps on the table, causing me to drop the syrup-doused morsel down my front. Where did you come from? I growl under my breath as I grab a napkin and wipe my shirt. I had no idea the Chases had a cat. Unfortunately, the napkin does little to sop up the syrup, and I sigh, realizing it's no use. I'll have to change. Oh no, did Lucy startle you? Linda asks as she re-enters the room. You could say that. I don't even bother to mask the irritation in my voice as the cat pads across the table before jumping down. I didn't even know you had a cat. Linda shakes her head. She's an older cat, so she hides a lot, but she does like to come out when she smells food. However, she is not supposed to be on the table, and she knows it. Her gaze shifts to the cat as she says this, but the cat pays her no mind. She turns back to me. I'm sorry she startled you. You aren't allergic, are you? I don't think so, but I'm not sure I've been around a cat before. Certainly not in the last five years, but I don't remember much about my original family. Well, I hope not, but we'll adjust to that if we have to. She holds up a backpack clearly filled with supplies. I don't have your books since I don't know what you're taking, but I've got a binder, dividers, pens, pencils, a few notebooks, and... She crosses to the fridge and pulls out a brown sack. Lunch. Wow. I don't even have words other than that. I blink at the gifts, taken aback. No foster parent has ever given me so much for school. Most of them couldn't even be bothered to wake me up for school, let alone make breakfast or lunch. You let me know if there's anything else they want that I don't have. I tried to remember what Andy had to have last year, but sometimes they add new stuff. One time, Andy had to have a green pin specifically for checking papers. The teacher that year decided red corrections were too harsh, so she thought green might be better, and then they never even used them. Linda shakes her head as she chuckles. Andy is your... My youngest son. He just graduated last year. He's off at college now, which is why we decided to foster. We've always had a full house, and it's just too quiet now. Oh, will you be taking in more kids then? I can't help but hope she'll say no. It's selfish, but they're being so nice, I don't really want to share the attention. Not for a little bit. You're our first permanent placement, and we want to do it right. She looks as if she wants to say more, but before she can, an alarm goes off and she pulls out her cell. Oops, time to go. Do you want to change really quick? I wish I could say no, because I know my outfits are limited, but I can't go to school with a sticky smear down my chest. 
so I hurry back upstairs and grab a change of clothes. Unfortunately, the next nicest piece I own happens to be a white shirt. I hate wearing white clothing because no matter how thick the material is, it seems that you can always see through it. It probably won't matter as few students seem to notice me, but I'll still be wondering if people can see through my shirt. Not a great start to what's bound to be a stellar day. When I arrive back downstairs, Linda hands me the bag, and I throw it over my shoulder and follow her out to her car. It's just an SUV, and not an expensive one like a Lexus or anything, but it's spotless inside. There's not even a piece of dirt on the floor mat, and I feel self-conscious as I slide in. What happens if I get the car dirty? Is that when she turns into a tyrant? I had another foster mom who did that. She was super sweet and nice until one of the kids accidentally dropped a cup full of orange juice on the floor. And then the woman went nuclear. Is everything okay? Linda asks, picking up on my hesitation. It's just so clean. I'm afraid to mess it up. Oh, don't worry about that. It was my birthday two weeks ago, and Joseph got me a car detailing package. This is the cleanest this car has been since I bought it. She smiles and backs out of the driveway. But I can't help wondering when the other shoe will drop. Everyone has a flaw, and prayer can't be her only one. In my limited experience, the nicer people seem, the bigger their flaw when it comes out. Friendship High School hasn't changed since Friday, but it seems different, as Linda pulls into the parking lot. Maybe it's because I never come in this way. Frank and Darla's house was closer to the school, and they insisted I could walk, rain, snow, or shine. Thankfully in Texas, it's a lot more of the latter, but there were a few odd weather days that had me ducking in the back door looking like a wet mop. Out front, there are more trees and more outdoor seating for students. Do you want me to come in with you? Linda asks as she pulls into a parking spot. All my kids went here, so I know my way around. Oh, good grief. I can't think of anything worse. But she's been so nice. I don't want to say that out loud. Thanks, but I'll be fine. It's not like it's the first day or anything. I know where all my classes are. Oh, right. Well, if you're sure. There is a look of sadness on her face, but I assure her that I'm positive. The last thing I need is her coming in with me. I don't know if anyone would recognize her, but I'm not going to take the chance. Even if they didn't, you don't walk into high school with your mother, or foster parent in my case and you certainly don't let them come in with you a month into school. Before she can say anything else, I open the door and hoist my bag over my shoulder. I move to follow the stream of students entering the school, but she rolls down her window and hollers at me. I'll pick you up here at 3.30. I flash a wave, but don't turn around. I can already feel the eyes on me, so I drop my gaze to the ground and hurry inside.